And I couldn't imagine anything like that happening here in Ukraine. What about those cars? What's the hack? Where do they get money like those students from school to ride a car? Football games were so big that it was like an excuse to pregame, to, to drink before the game, or they have something called tailgating. This is, again, like a very American thing that people go to the parking lot of the stadium and they'll have a barbecue and drinks so people get drunk before the game and then you go watch the game. Ethan, how dare you Americans not to take off your <laughs> shoes when you're entering your own house? <laughs> There's so many choices. When you go to the supermarket, you can find very nice products. But on the other side, we have very strong paradox of choice that it takes you forever to go to the supermarket because your toilet paper, you know, you have like 20 different brands of toilet paper. How do you possibly choose which is the one for you? <laughs> Oh yeah, global citizens. This is Ethan from Real Life English, where every single week it is our mission to take you beyond the classroom to speak English confidently and naturally, connect to the world, and actually use your English as the doorway to living your greatest life. All right, Ksenia, I want to kick us off in a fun way. We're going to try a new game we haven't tried before called Word Sneak. Mm -hmm. Now, what does it mean? To sneak, or if someone is sneaky. Oh, to sneak something is to secretly hide something or put something in your purse, for example. So it's do something secretly. And if someone is sneaky, you might not know their intentions. So it's called word sneak because we're going to be trying to sneak words into the conversation. So our producer, Izzy, has been kind enough to, without us knowing, select five words or expressions for each of us. And Ksenia and I are going to have a conversation and try to sneak those words into the conversation in a natural way without the other person knowing. So you ready, Ksenia? Okay, let's try to do that. And if you're on YouTube, we'll also show the words before each one is said so that you guys can actually know which words we're sneaking in there. So if you're just listening to audio, that won't be possible, but you might still catch it. So Ethan, I know you're living in Barcelona, right? For some... Mm -hmm. That's right. Some time now, right? How many years? Seven years. Seven years already. And, you know, I've always been curious to ask you this. Like, sometimes you might feel nostalgic. So did you bring American flag to your Barcelona flat? <laughs> I did not. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not patriotic enough to, to hang an American flag. Okay. But, I mean, sometimes, you know, I can feel a little bit more closer to my country by listening to music. So in particular, if I wanted to feel very American one day, I might listen to some country music like Taylor Swift, for example. I used to hate her. Maybe not hate. It's a strong word. Okay. But um, sometimes <laughs> I, I felt like she used to use all those shenanigans to make people love her. <laughs> right. But now I changed my mind. I think her lyrics are pretty impressive. Yeah. I could, I could see that. Uh, she, she has some weird shenanigans. I think she had some show that she was surrounded by flamingos or something like this. It was all pink. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that I one? I think that was all the rage in the States that year. Pink color. <laughs> Flamingo pink. Pink color. <laughs> Barbie, I think. Oh, probably that something. was like that. Yeah. Mm. They might even dress the Statue of Liberty maybe for 4th of July, you know, in some Barbie hot pink clothing. Oh, to welcome in the immigrants. <laughs> that sounds crazy. <laughs> but back to Taylor Swift. I once watched the video where she literally used the trampoline in one of her shows. Oh, that's insane. Uh, that's really crazy. <laughs> you know, we were talking about ways to feel more American. Of course, I forgot the most American thing of all is I could go and get a, a cheeseburger somewhere here. Mm -hmm. Even though I'd, I don't eat red meat, but I could get a chicken burger instead. Okay. Would you eat it for breakfast? I don't think I would eat it for breakfast. Eggs... And bacon and, you know, the full American breakfast, eggs, bacon, okay. pancakes. I could, you know, have an American breakfast, though, in my pajamas, watching some good American series. What is a typical American breakfast? Is it an oatmeal, like in Great Britain? No, that would be more British, the porridge or oatmeal. Okay. Did you use all your words? Yeah, no, <laughs> one more word. <laughs> Did okay. you use all yours? <laughs> I did. Ah, uh, so you won. Okay. <laughs> Last one I wanted to ask is... No winners or losers here. <laughs> yeah, okay. Last one I wanted to use is um, when having your breakfast in the United States, have you ever 
seen a squirrel behind your window because I heard <laughs> this often happens. You have a lot of animals. I, I actually have. Oh, really? There's tons of squirrels in Colorado. So <laughs> it's my brother has a lot. Oftentimes when I go to the States, I'll be staying at my brother's house and they have like these big windows looking out onto their yard. So if you look outside, mm -hmm. you're bound to see squirrels doing some different shenanigans. If I want to bring up that word again. <laughs> Great, Ksenia. So that was that was a doozy. That was quite difficult to use some of those words, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. But like you know, when you you are in a longer conversation, maybe it would be more easily and naturally because like you know, ch topics change and it gets easier. <laughs> but that's the fun of it. Yeah. I don't know if it, like the American breakfast, if that was one, or if it was just the oatmeal, maybe trampoline. The I trampoline, heard that sounded like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shenanigans, what trampoline. What other words do you have? Shenanigans, mm -hmm. of course. Shenanigans. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you to define it for our viewers and listeners. Right. It's doing crazy, silly things. So I said like squirrels do shenanigans. Mm -hmm. People have probably seen different videos of squirrels doing crazy things or cat videos doing shenanigans. If Taylor Swift were doing shenanigans, it's in a sense just being silly. Okay. You know? So I had Taylor Swift. I had the flamingo. I don't, I don't think she's ever had any flamingos in her shows, but who knows? The Statue of Liberty, cheeseburger, and pajamas. <laughs> did you have a pajama party in your childhood? I did, yeah. That's quite having a sleepover, we might call it. Pajama parties, I think maybe you use more for girls. Yeah. But. This is something I always enjoyed while watching American movies, those pajama parties and everything like that related to American culture. Uh, mm. Because we never had it like that. I think sometimes they try to do it here. But it's just like copying the movies, American movies, um, because it's not so traditional here. So today, speaking of the topic, I brought a list of questions about American culture to ask you, Ethan, because like personally, I've never been to the US and all I know about America is from the movies. It sounds perfect. So we can jump into today's main topic all about crazy American shenanigans <laughs> or strange, strange culture. <laughs> yeah, I have. I have a list of topics to ask and I have three categories. Oh, wow. You went all out. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean to go all out? It means you go above and beyond. You do more than what's expected of you. So I have three categories to ask you. One is related to American schools, colleges. Uh, another category is about American homes and everything around the, what can happen at home. And the third category are the questions from our students, because I asked our students on Instagram and our, in our Fluency Circle to send me questions if they have any. So we got a couple of questions from them as well. Let's get the show on the road. Let's picture ourselves at school, right? You remember mm -hmm. yourself back in school, Ethan? It depends what year, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I can get an image. When I watch American movies, or I watched American movies back in my teenage uh, years, um, I've always noticed those lockers, school lockers. They are mm. everywhere, like in every movie. So I wanted to ask you, Ethan, they are. did you have your locker decorated? Because this is something like crazy, all those posters, mm. pictures in those lockers. Yeah, that's true. I only had lockers in high school, I believe. That's the only thing I remember. There's another word, cubbies. So this is when you're younger. Little kids have cubbies, which is kind of, kind of like there's a armoire, you know, like like a dresser, we call it, like that you put clothes in. But it's all open and it's just square. This would be the typical cubby I would think of. So each kid has like one square sort of box where they can put their belongings, their their school things, their backpack, and so on. And then when you're in high school, maybe because high school kids get up to more shenanigans, <laughs> you have an actual locker with a, a padlock so that no one can get into your, your belongings. And I did have a locker. I never could be bothered to decorate it. I, for me, that feels very from movies and series. Yeah. So it's something from the movies, not from real life. Yeah. Just from what did I have in there? I think just books and any supplies maybe that I didn't need between classes. So you might grab, so I would start school in the morning at 7 a.m. So I might just grab the books that I needed for my morning classes and then go there again at lunch, leave them, go have lunch. And then uh, I might after grab my books that I need for the afternoon. I don't have a lot of memories about my locker, but mm -hmm. probably was some strategy like that. But 
Okay. I don't. I'm trying to remember even if I remember anyone having a decorated locker, and I can't uh-huh. remember that. I think that's a very high school series movie sort of thing. Another fun fact is that every thing happens by the locker. Like any important gossip spilled, or any important conversation, or even fighting, everything happened by the locker. Even like the other day, I watched this clip from the Superman. I believe the first episode where I remember this guy who like turned into a Superman. Um, when he discovered his powers for the very first time, fighting a school bully by accident. <laughs> and that happened in the locker, by the lockers. Yeah, in real life, I would say we don't spend a lot of time by our locker in general. It's kind of like a in and out sort of okay, deal. So it is something from the movies, really. I have so many more questions, so let's get from the lockers to something else, but not too far. Another thing that was like super... I don't know, it it seemed crazy to have something like that. High school students were kissing pretty openly in all those movies. <laughs> and I couldn't imagine anything like that happening here in Ukraine. No, I don't think that happens much. I, I think, yeah, you, you would even get uh, talking to if you mm. were doing that. So That's openly. a nice phrase, to talk to, like, to, to be talked to. get a talking to. Get yeah, a talking as, to. as a noun, like a talking to is a noun, right? To get a talking to. So you get reprimanded by mm-hmm. one of the teachers or mm-hmm. school staff. And another thing it reminds me of that I don't think exists here, for example, I don't think it exists in any other country I've lived, is a dress code. So, and I don't mean a school outfit. Some schools do have outfits, but a dress code is in they... I remember they would come in and tell us, okay, so these are the rules. Like girls, if you are wearing a a tank top, one of the ones that has straps, like it has to be this many fingers wide. So you have to use your fingers to measure. Anything thinner is against the the dress code and things like this. So you can't dress however you want. And I see, I have schools near where I live here in Barcelona. And sometimes I see young girls dress quite scandalously. Like sometimes I'm like, oh my God, can't believe the parents are okay (laughs) with them going out in the street like that. But Oh, schools here are pretty strict. We we also have dress code. So either they have uniforms, like special color, or they just like ask to wear something light at uh, at the top, right? Like, and something dark in your lower body. Uh, but always like, you know, no tanks or nothing like too open. So maybe it's a thing here in Barcelona, <laughs> <laughs> dressing scandalously. Maybe, maybe it's too hot. I don't know. In the summer, for sure. (laughs) Okay, let's move on to the next question, okay? What about those cars? Like, I mean, what's the heck? Where do they get money, like those students from school, to ride a car? Yeah, it depends. I was going to actually say about the kissing, probably the car would be a good place to do the kissing because there's a parking lot in front of the high school and technically it's high school property, so you could have someone, you know, keeping watch there to make sure people aren't doing bad things. But we also had drug, like drug sweeps, where they would come through with dogs during the classes and go through the lockers. This so people who were misbehaving might keep drugs in their locker. <laughs> that could be <laughs> something you could find. Or in the car. And some people would actually get in trouble because they had drugs in their car. So that was a tangent, sorry. but No, but that was interesting. I didn't know that's happening. I can't imagine here. Like, first of all, we don't have parking lots in front of our schools. <laughs> And yeah, no checkups for drugs. And you asked about how people get cars. So I said it depends because there were some kids whose their parents would buy them their first car. This is something too you see on TV, right? Like the Sweet 16. You have the Sweet 16 and oftentimes, I don't know if it's that often, but on TV or a movie, you might see the parents for the Sweet 16th birthday party buy them their first car. So the This was the case for some people, but others, like my brother, for example, he knew when he turned 16, he really wanted a car. So he saved up. He worked for, I think he started working his first job when he was 14 and he saved up so he could buy a car when he turned 16. It's interesting. That's actually was my next question about jobs students have after school. Mm -hmm. It's so unusual for us here. Like when you're in school, you're learning like no jobs here. But uh, in the U.S., I, I see it in movies again, like many students have some real jobs after school. So you're saying your brother was working, right? Since 14. He had his first one at 14. I think I had my first one at 15 or 16. So 
it's it's quite common. I I saved up. I was saving up so that I could study abroad. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's it's another thing, but it's quite common because some people's parents will pay for everything, but other people they might need to save up to be able to go to university. University tuitions are super expensive in the United mm-hmm. States. Uh, or they might be saving up to buy a car, or just to be able to have their own spending money. That that's pretty incredible because I think it also adds up to this independence. I again in the movies I see that like I don't know students are so independent in the U.S. and they become early mm-hmm. independent quite early. Maybe also because like getting the jobs and having more privacy as yeah. well. I right. think that culturally really is American that we become independent much earlier because. Mm-hmm. We get a car when we're 16. We go to university. Like here, for example, unless you're living in a small town and there's no university, most people will study at a university in their city. But in the States, even if there's a university in your city, I think most people will go somewhere else and even they'll go across the country. And it's a very big country. So you could end up mm-hmm. going somewhere that's mm-hmm. potentially very far away from from your family. Yeah. And that's that's something very different from Ukraine, for example, because if you have a university and especially if it's a good university in your town, you most probably or city, you most probably stay here close to mm-hmm. your parents, close to your family. It's very rare that somebody would choose another city unless it's the capital. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always like it, it seems prestigious to graduate from the university in the capital city. Ooh, what does prestigious mean? Um, very high rated, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like very good. With honor. With honor. Mm-hmm. I've noticed, Ksenia, actually, both of us, we've been using a lot of advanced vocabulary and expressions just naturally during this conversation. We haven't been defining all of them. So if you are watching this on YouTube or you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or somewhere else, then you might want to check out the Real Life English app because there you can get all of the most advanced vocabulary expressions defined for you there and you get vocabulary flashcards so you never forget these new words and expressions so next time you get in conversation you can already use them so just wanted to remind you guys to check that out which you can find linked in the description or search for real life english in the app store of your choice and by the way another one let me come back a little bit and ask you to um, expand a little bit more on why is it called sweet 16 again something sweet is it's a alternative to say cool, awesome, or sometimes we use it for a person. If we think they're very sweet, it's they're very kind. We call it a sweet 16 There's because it sounds good. There's alliteration, right? The double mm-hmm. S. Mm-hmm. And just because it's like, it's a special birthday in a lot of Spanish speaking countries, they have like the quinceanera, which is like the, when you turn quince, when you turn 15, you have your, it's kind of like a coming of age for girls, mm-hmm. especially. Uh, different countries have different traditions like this for different ages, right? So I think it's also a, a coming of age. So it's like a milestone. A milestone, yeah. It's another nice way to put it. Seems like, again, judging from the movie, seems like everyone is obsessed with uh, college football or college basketball. Like, in general, college sport. It's even televised. Even they mm-hmm. being like amateurs, not professional players, they have huge stadiums. Some of the schools do have some really big stadiums, right? And mm-hmm. everyone seems to be either rooting for their local team or be on the team. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, there's in high school and college, right? College mm-hmm. football is absurdly popular mm-hmm. and there's a lot of investment in it. Uh, if you are a good athlete, even you can get a full ride. So this is a nice expression to get a full ride it means that you get your university fully paid for uh, because you're playing on the team. Is that true? Like this is something I watched in the movies that I could how being a sportsman, you like secure a place at, mm-hmm. or spot at the college. It sounds crazy, right? Yeah. So we're really that is something about our culture. We're really big on sports. We're really keen on sports. So there is huge investments because people will go to university to play on a team and that's sort of the doorway to being able to go onto the professional league. So if you're really good in high school, you can play in college. If you're really good in college, then you'll get scouted. This is a word meaning that a scout, a person from one of the professional teams goes and watches people play and might try to draft or get one of these players to join their team when they finish university. So it's a big thing, sports, and it can be a pathway to being able to Even if you don't end up playing a professional sport, you still get to go to university for free. So you end up getting a degree. 
But it does go the other way too, that it's not enough just to be playing on the sports team. You also have to maintain good grades to be able to keep playing on the team. You can get kicked off the team if you are flunking out of your classes or failing, failing your classes. Flunking means failing. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice phrase. I, I wanted to ask you, did you play or did you root for your college team? College, it's very difficult to play. And I didn't play any sports in high school either. I kind of regret that because it's a great way, I think, to build community, to build friendships and so on. But I was never so sporty as a, as a kid. But I did go in college my first year because the football games were so big that it was like an excuse to pregame to, to drink before the game or they have something called tailgating this is Ooh. again like a very american thing that people go to the parking lot of the stadium and they'll have a barbecue and drinks so people get drunk before the game and then you go watch the game oh my god so it's an excuse to to party and to drink then there's parties after the game but the thing is i, I would always leave the games earlier just because i got bored it's a really it's like a three-hour game it's very slow football there's a lot of strategy involved so i could never get into it how about pre-game this getting yourself prepared for the game <laughs> <laughs> that part i enjoy but then it's you would sober up during the game and it's kind of like okay you know i'm tired i'm ready to go home mm -hmm. I'm, i'm over it so you had some some questions about the home yeah okay so let's start with home or house itself i know or i noticed that it's been changing we see more and more apartments like real to life apartments in the movies but if i remember those older movies every time a typical american house would be this two story building with this beautiful staircase uh, i don't know how, how far from to, from truth is this having like a two story beautiful house it really depends where you live but because the united states is so big and there's so much space i think that the house I'd actually wouldn't mind seeing the statistics on this to see what the comparison is, but I imagine many more people live in houses than in apartments. Really? Because so most of the United States isn't city, you know? So most people do live in houses. I, I lived in houses my entire life. I'm trying to think the first time I lived in an apartment. When I moved to Mallorca in college, that was, that was the first time I lived in an apartment. Mm, interesting to know. So when I was 20 was the first time. Mm -hmm. Nice. Did you have a staircase from where you we can see like Home Alone? Remember, he was sliding uh, on this staircase. We did have a staircase. I grew up mostly in two houses and both of them had staircases. Yeah. Remember as a little kid playing like sliding down it, mm -hmm. you know, on mm -hmm. your butt or <laughs> running up them as fast as you can, having races up the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. Izzy actually looked up for us this statistic. As of 2023, about 65% of Americans live in detached houses. Well, 35% live in apartments. Interesting. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. funny how your perception can change just based on where they're having more series be set, right? Okay. Going inside that house. Ethan, how dare you Americans not to take off your <laughs> shoes when you're entering your own house <laughs> or even worse, your friends' houses. I'm right there with you. I, <laughs> I do take off my shoes now. And here, like I... I wear slippers here at home, uh, here in Barcelona, I, I wear slippers. And when I went back to the States for Christmas, for example, I just have the habit to take off my shoes. But my dad, for example, doesn't. And he takes the dogs for walks and it's like muddy and he'll track in mud into the house. And it's just like, like drives my mom and, my, and me crazy. <laughs> But did you take off your shoes being a kid growing up in the US? I, honest, I can't remember, honestly. It like makes me cringe every time I see not only you yeah. walking inside the house in your shoes, but also jumping on the bed wearing the shoes. Yeah. No, I don't think that my mom would have let me jump <laughs> on the bed in the shoes. <laughs> okay. That's something I see too on a, on a lot of series is like we were watching Seinfeld and it happens in an apartment in New York, right? And a lot of times it happens a lot of it in Jerry Seinfeld's apartment, the main character of the show. And his friends will come over and they'll like lay or sit on the couch with their shoes on and their shoes up on the couch. Right. And I'm always I always find that crazy. Like, okay, your friend just came in from the street and is just making himself at home, getting his dirty shoes that have stepped in who knows what. You'll never see that in Ukraine. I mean, like we have a strong <laughs> culture of taking our shoes off. <laughs> so this was something I noticed when I went to Poland for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I'd be curious if in Ukraine it's the same. But not only do people not wear their shoes in the house, 
but they tend to have slippers also for guests. Yeah. So yeah. when you arrive at their house, they have a pair of slippers waiting for you, which I thought, I thought that was amazing. It's like such a beautiful, hospitable thing. But in the States, I don't think you'd ever find we that. We do have. We do have. And sometimes, you know, what happens as well. Like, for example, it happened to me. Like when I didn't have um, enough slippers for my guests, for example, for some holiday, mm -hmm. I having people over. So I warned them to take their sleepers here because the floors are too cold in winter. <laughs> oh, that's something here too, that there's a big culture of if you don't wear slippers, you're going to catch a cold. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, a question that is uh, both college or school and home. Do you guys really have those crazy home parties when like imagine parents go outside, <laughs> go somewhere, and you invite all your friends. And sometimes it's just like a real huge crowd flooding your house. Like I remember the last time I saw it in the movies, in the movie Yes Day with Jenna Ortega. They just had a crazy party. Is it true? Yeah. Did you have any? This always happens in the movies, right? In the yeah. series. I don't think it's that common, but I went, I grew up in a small town and I was a pretty good kid. So I tended not to do things that could get me in trouble, or at least I wouldn't do them in such a way that, you know, my parents could find out about them. I never went to one of these parties in high school. In college, yes, to, to house parties, but I think then it usually belonged to the students or the it was rented by the students. So I believe they happen, but in the movies, they make it sound like, you know, it, it's every weekend or, you know, everyone goes to these things. And I don't think that that's actually that common. And like every time... Parents are not at home, like it's just like a, they take advantage, just like just throw out the like throw the party. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's people I'm sure who do it, but it's like pretty disrespectful of your parents, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So. Last question about the home home related question, mm -hmm. right? So I found it really nice. It's not a weird tradition. I find it nice. So I'm interested in asking you, is this tradition still alive? So in the movies, I often see if you have a new neighbor. So it's a tradition to pay him a visit, pay her or him a visit and bring a homemade meal. People do it. I don't know if we've done it. I'm trying to think too, when we moved when I was a kid, if, if some neighbors did that. I think it's not as common as it is in the movies, but there's people who do it. Mm -hmm. But that is kind of strange. Like you just moved into a place and your neighbors show up with something without knowing, you know, what your diet is like and yeah. things like this. It's a nice gesture, though. It's a nice gesture, but I just wondered to ask you, can it be a little bit related to curiosity, like to be curious too much and like have it as an excuse to, you know, ask more questions about new people? It could be. You're wanting to see if their house is nicer than yours is, <laughs> how the remodel went. <laughs> it could yeah. be. There could be some aspect of that. And also just wanting to know who's living next to you, right? Who's this new person? Yeah, yeah. I just remember one of my favorite movies as a kid or as a teenager was Edward the Scissorhands. And I remember everyone was so curious to look at him. And that's why they use this tradition as an excuse to bring some meal and like, you know, <laughs> peeping over the shoulder to see the Edward. Exactly. There's some really nice tradition. That's a great movie to mention for American culture because it's this guy who's been isolated, living alone, and he's almost being shocked by a lot of these cultural things. So it made me think too of the Avon calling, you know, like the, the people who go door to door, the door to door salesmen, right? I think it's quite more common in the States than in other countries. We used to have it, usually something like at school or in a working place, somebody, you know, would bring the catalog. Something interesting I'll share because my mom just told me about this. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of Girl Scouts and Girl Scout cookies? Only in the movies. But yeah, <laughs> I, of course I heard. But it's a very American thing that when we're kids, we are in the Scouts. Not everyone, but a lot of people do Scouts. And this was actually something I was really jealous of when I was a kid. So I was in Boy Scouts and we get to sell popcorn. And it's like they, they have different kinds of popcorn like covered in chocolate and caramel and things like this but no one likes car uh popcorn as much as they do cookies so it's <laughs> i was like jealous always the girls get to sell cookies it's much easier and the girl scout cookies are famous people look forward some people look forward all year to getting to buy girl scout cookies oh, really uh, because there's they're these special cookies you can't buy in the store they're specially made for the girl scouts and they're they're they are delicious they have some Everyone has their favorite kinds. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought I really thought those were just like random cookies. I don't know. 
No, we'll have to on on YouTube. We'll have to show some some pictures of Girl Scouts cookies for mm -hmm. people to see. Mm -hmm. And you say that boys uh, tend to sell popcorn. Is it like only your yours uh, or your organization, or is it like throughout America? I think it's all the Boy Scouts. I think it's the same deal. Like, there's probably they have a partnership with someone who provides the, the popcorn, but it was kind of difficult to sell because people aren't usually looking to buy big tins of flavored popcorn as they are for cookies. So great, Ethan. We only are left with a couple of questions from our students. Let me ask you. One question is from Claudia from our Fluency Circle. And she lived actually in Houston for six years. Oh, wow. That's why she knows what she's talking about when she says that <laughs> Americans are obsessed <laughs> with shopping. In the USA, people buy things all the time, change furniture and electronics and leave the replaced items outside. Any comments on that? <laughs> they leave their what outside? Like uh, the replaced items. So the old ones, like they bought new ones and all the old items, the replaced ones, they leave outside. I don't know about that in, in Colorado. But one thing that's strange that that makes me think of is, is that people order Amazon. Amazon's become huge there. And they'll just leave your package on your doorstep, which here couldn't happen. Like people, someone would take it <laughs> for sure if we just left it outside the door. So they always have to hand it to you or hand it to your doorman if you have a doorman here. That's something that's interesting. But would you agree that it's like too much obsession over shopping? What I would say about that, it was actually, it was something I took note of is that and it, it's a difference with Europe, at least, is that America is a very capitalist culture. One of the things that I took note of that I think can be overwhelming, even for me, it's like a reverse culture shock thing when I go there, is just there's so many choices. When you go to the supermarket, you have breakfast cereals. You have like a hundred different brands of breakfast cereals. There's a nice aspect to this because there's a lot of nice like artisanal products and special things that you would never think of. Just one that came to mind is, for example, sunflower seed butter with chocolate and hazelnuts. Oh my God. You know, like something very, very niche, very specific like this. So sometimes you can try really nice things or you can find very nice products, um, many healthy products, or if you have a certain dietary restriction, there's often a lot of options for you compared to what I've seen in other countries. But on the other side, we have very strong paradox of choice that it takes you forever to go to the supermarket because you're <laughs> anything like toilet paper. You know, you have like 20 different brands of toilet paper. How do you possibly choose which is the one for you? Uh, analysis paralysis. Analysis paralysis. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> awesome. So um, next question. This is a question from our Instagram follower. I've heard they don't use cotton cases to cover a blanket. So first of all, a blanket. Do you use this word in America or do you use duvet? I know. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Duvet. So we don't. We have comforters. At least this is what I had always growing up. Sorry, what is a comforter? A comforter, it's the same thing, but it's it's already packed, right? So it's just the whole thing. You don't have to take it off and put it back on. If you wash it, you just throw it in the washer and and dryer and, and it gets clean. But here's the same in Barcelona that you have the duvet and the duvet cover so that you have to take it off. You just wash the cover. You don't wash the, you usually don't wash the duvet. That's what we have here. So it, it, it's not the case in America? No. And it's such a pain taking off and putting on the duvet cover. So <laughs> I kind of miss that actually. You're saying you have a whole thing like together and you clean it like together, the whole mm -hmm. duvet. Exactly. How big should be your <laughs> washing machine to put a whole duvet there? Everything's bigger in America, <laughs> Ksenia. <laughs> That was something I was thinking about is like the something very iconic. I'll just share real quick is the big gulps. Big gulps. Have you heard of this or seen in the movie? So 7-Eleven, it's a very famous chain mm -hmm. in the States. It's called a convenience store would be the type. So it's not a whole big supermarket, but it's like a small one where you can just get basic things without all the analysis paralysis. But they sell also their like soda, soda fountain drinks. We would call it where it's like a dispenser, right? And they got very famous because they've made these bigger and bigger and they have these things called a big gulp and then they made an even bigger one called a double big gulp i'm not sure if they even have a triple one now but it's this thing that's it's a drink like the size of your head so it's like no wonder americans are so having so many health problems so much obesity because they're drinking like these gigantic drinks and in american cars the the cup holders have gotten bigger and bigger because the drinks keep getting bigger and bigger. So these people need <laughs> a big cup holder for these ginormous 
drinks that they're getting from 7-Eleven. Oh my God, that's crazy. Yeah, and I, I, I even <laughs> think that those, you were talking about shopping malls and those convenience stores. I think their parking lots are also huge, like the fields. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true. Well, if you're in a big city, of course, it's different. But if you're in a town, you never have issues with parking. That's something good, right? But again, it's related to the fact that every family owns one or two or even three cars, right? Yeah. I mean, if mom and dad and the 16-year-old all have cars, then <laughs> you, have to, you also have big garages, right? Like oftentimes people have three car garages at their house. Maybe you have a boat even. You have to have a garage for the boat. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like two houses, one house for the family and one house for yeah. all the It's transport. really excessive, right? Yeah. Last questions. Last question. And I believe that this question came from someone from Brazil because I already heard it from mm -hmm. one of our team members about this misunderstanding or confusion. Yeah, this confusion. So Americans eat avocados with salt. We would never do it <laughs> like, yeah, here. I believe uh, he's talking about Brazil. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, when I lived in Brazil, it was the opposite. Like you eat avocado ice cream you make avocado smoothies like what that's so so strange but one of the things that's important asterisk here is that they're different avocados so brazilians have these big avocados that are more the taste is more mild it's more smooth and creamy and american avocados they typically come from mexico i believe and they're they're small ones and the taste is a bit more bitter so it lends itself more to eating something salty than like we're making a guacamole, something like this. Whereas the Brazilian ones lend themselves more to being almost like a substitute for butter because it's just something very creamy. I like both though. I grew to appreciate a good, you know, avocado smoothie or avocado ice cream when I lived in Brazil. Can you find those big avocados in Spain? No, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen them outside of Brazil, mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. fact. Yeah, same here. And actually avocado is something new to Ukraine. I don't believe I've ever seen them, you know, before 2010 or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and honestly, I didn't even know how to eat it. Avocados are so finicky because you have to get them exactly the right day. Or maybe you have two days, but you have very few time to eat it before it goes bad. And when you first get it, usually it's hard. So, yeah. What is finicky? Finicky means that it's another way to say picky or choosy. So if you say that someone's finicky, it's like they only like very specific things. But if we say it with this, it's sort of the avocado is finicky because of this. It's you have only specific days to eat it. You have to really get it right. Yeah, I, I notice it. And I, I don't like avocados when they are too uh, hard, you know, and this is what you get here in the stores because it's imported. So usually they are like not ripe yet. It was nice having one from Brazil since I just got back from there. So we can jump into the dig in it. Mm -hmm. Have we gotten enough of American culture for one day? Oh, yeah. But that was super <laughs> interesting. And finally, I got some answers to my questions, you know, because I grew up watching American <laughs> movies and you always compare your life with life from the movies, mm -hmm. you know, and some things really got you thinking, like, can it really be true? <laughs> I prepared for this because I wasn't sure what you were going to ask. So I wanted to be prepared to talk about anything. So I have a whole list of things that we didn't cover. So if you guys enjoyed this, let us know in the comments or shoot us an email at hello at reallifeglobal.com and we can do a part two. Mm -hmm. Would be nice. Yeah, you will be <laughs> shocking me. Yeah, <laughs> with things I didn't <laughs> exactly. ask. <laughs> Ksenia, what have you been digging this week? This is something I really wanted to share with you today. I actually started it today. I attended a yoga class, a group yoga class, mm, and I really nice. liked it, but not so much. This wasn't my first encounter with yoga. When I was pregnant with Mira, I used to attend this mm, prenatal yoga. I think this is the way they call it, uh, like yoga designed for pregnant women. Um, so it was really relaxing, a lot of time dedicated to the breathing practice, you know, and then there was this asanas. But here today, it was super hard, physically challenging. <laughs> and I believe they focus more on the physical aspect of it. So no breathing practice, only those asanas and really challenging. You know, I'm a person who try always to 
give 100%. And today it was so hard to, I don't know, push myself to the limits with certain asanas. It's just because I was physically not prepared to do so. But I bet the next class you go to, it's going to be, I wouldn't say a piece of cake, but it'll be easier. Maybe, you know? yeah. It'll, yeah. it'll get easier. Because it's a lot of not just strength, but it's new weird positions as yeah. well that your body's not but used to. But you have to be really good at balancing because many that times too. today I was just like falling or leaning, oh, you know, yeah. I, I couldn't <laughs> keep straight. <laughs> and one of the funniest exercise, but actually one of my favorite, I guess, because it was funny and challenging and still like somehow you want to do that. So this is a tree position. When you have to, I think you know it, we did it in Peru, right? There you go. <laughs> uh, in our master class we had there. So you have to um, lift off the ground your left uh, foot, right? And place a sole of your left foot to the inner right thigh and stand in a position like really straight, like with your arms in a praying position, right? Or maybe uh, extended. I really like that position, but it was challenging to stand like that more yeah. than 30 seconds. Especially if you want to take it to the next level, you close your eyes. Mm -hmm. So our eyes are really important for balance. So if you start getting really good at holding it, then you can try closing your eyes and see if you can still maintain your balance. Right. So this is something I started today and really enjoyed it. Waiting for the next session. That's so awesome. What about you? What have you been digging this week? I thought I just mentioned this. I just got back from Brazil on Monday. So what I've been digging is living my Portuguese the last couple of weeks. And I thought it would actually be nice to share because I think that there are lessons here too for learners. So I lived in Brazil for about a year and a half between split between two different times. And so I used to speak pretty fluent Portuguese. I probably got to like B1, B2 level. But then when I moved back here to Barcelona, I sort of left it, forgot it for a long time and even had some trips to Brazil, but was just barely using it when I went. And it was very easy too, because our team, usually when I go, we're meeting up with the team and everyone speaks incredible English. So it's easy to use that as a crutch, right? I started taking up my Portuguese again about a year ago before we were going to have uh, our leadership team meeting there in, in Curitiba. And so I've been since then, especially like the last six months more, living my English more and more. So <clears throat> I've made some friends here and I'll, you know, speak on WhatsApp, do like the voice memos to practice my speaking. Uh, and I, something that was really important too was like starting to listen to more music. Spotify is great because it suggests me always new, new music in Portuguese and watching some series. I've watched several different series, read a book that I just recently finished uh, and listening to podcasts when I go to the gym mm -hmm. in Portuguese. So you were so. using our real life way method. You were living exactly. your Portuguese, right? <laughs> I was making it fun, natural, and convenient. And when I went to Brazil, so I first went for, I was going to meet up with Justin uh, and some other team members. But first I went to Belo Horizonte where I used to live for carnival, which was my first, I've just only been to like a couple very small carnivals. This was my first big carnival and it was amazing. But it was like an intensive because it was five days that I pretty much just spoke Portuguese night and day. Oh. And so it was all of a sudden being thrown into the mouth of the beast. You know? <laughs> but it was an amazing experience because I was like, oh, you know, I was really able to do it. I was really able to like reactivate my Portuguese and have conversations and connect with people. And for me, something that was particularly meaningful was when I went to Florianopolis, like being able to connect with a lot of the partners of some of our colleagues who don't speak much English. And if I didn't speak Portuguese, I, I would not be able to speak with them so much. So that was really nice to be able to have uh, more conversations and connect on a deeper level with them. That's a nice, great experience. You use such a great phrase um, to be thrown in the mouth of a beast. In, <laughs> in which context can you say something like that? It, it's something like that, right? Like you're thrown right into the difficult situation without too much preparation. I think a good lesson here too, because many people may be saying, oh, you know, you got to go to Brazil and like, of course it's easier. But even if you can't travel to the country, that helps, right? If you travel and you can use it. And maybe some of you, that might be the case. Like maybe you could start looking into, can you save up some money? Can you start investing even just like a little bit of your paycheck each month to be able to uh, plan for that? And even if it's in a couple of years, right? But nevertheless, we have like 
the Real Life English app, for example, that anytime, anywhere, you can press a button and instantly be connected to an English speaker in another part of the world. And this is a great way to virtually travel, meet people from all different places, make friends, and so on. So you really have like no excuses not to start practicing your speaking in it. For me, even though like doing all the all of the the listening, that input's really important, of course. But if you're never speaking, then it's like you're you know you're never actually going to be able to develop that fluency and have that, especially that fulfilling sensation, that fulfilling feeling of you know I can do this. I'm speaking. I'm communicating with other people, which really becomes like a a flywheel, like rocket fuel that helps more and more make it then you want to study even more so that you can get even better. So like now I'm more motivated, for example, to start studying more vocabulary because it's one of the things I'm seeing. I'm, I'm sometimes missing specific words, so I want to broaden my vocabulary. That's another thing the Real Life English app is great for is because you can learn with all of the best words and expressions from each episode of the podcast and we've done all the hard work for you. So when you learn a language and when you get to the point when you really understand almost everything, it's really rewarding. But you feel this stress still when you have to speak, right? So that's like another milestone when you already uh, feel comfortable listening to English. That's the point when you have to start speaking it, right? It will be stressful, but this is like coming out of your comfort zone and getting even more rewards after that. I think it's a good stress, though. It's like a stress of I'm doing something difficult and everything and you'll come out on the other side. So just believe in yourself. Uh, yeah. So thanks so much for joining us for today's episode. We hope that you learn some things. We hope that you'll go out there and challenge yourself to speak more. And <laughs> maybe you can even connect with some Americans, ask them about strange things about the culture or <laughs> think twice when you see something in a series, right? Mm -hmm. And remember, dear listener, dear watcher, if you are enjoying these lessons, then a free way that you can support us so we can continue making better and better content for you is by, if you're on YouTube, give us a like, subscribe to the channel. It really helps YouTube to know so that uh, more people can discover and have fun learning with us. And if you're listening to the audio version, then you can leave us a five-star review in your favorite podcast player. So it be that Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere else that gives you this capability. Because again, it really helps us to reach more people. And remember that no matter what divides us, <laughs> which today we're discovering, Ksenia, mm -hmm. a lot of weird American things that might divide us, but that what unites us as human beings is far greater than those silly cultural differences. So one, two, three. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you want to change the way you speak English and speak English faster? Then you need to learn word chunks. Word chunks are basically about connecting the words in a sentence. Think about Lego blocks that instead of separate pieces scattered around, they are put together to form something really special. So stick around because today we're going to be putting connected speech and word chunks in practice and you will see how these connections apply in real conversations. <laughs>